thought I am blinking a bit because I'm really, really tired. Um, well, welcome to the latest episode of Every Platform. Sorry, it's, it's freezing cold out here. So it's making me feel really red. It's, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, welcome to the latest episode of Every Platform. <coughs> Excuse me. It's episode eight of every platform. Uh, sorry, episode nine. I believe, even sorry, episode nine. So Bristol. Yeah, episode nine of every platform. And this is a three-part episode. Well, three-part series of every platform episodes. It's going to be episodes nine, ten, and eleven. Now, episode nine today is our journey up to Yorkshire. As we make our way to, uh, we're actually going to go a different way than you'd expect because normally I used to go all the big split tickety way and go via like Birmingham and go all the way up to Doncaster through cross country and all that way. Not doing that today. Today, plan is via London. So we're going to Paddington, King's Cross, and then we're going on whole trains. It's a whole. First time using the Paragon series of, well, the 8300s, but the Paragon version. So, well, there's no real version, they're all the same, but whole trains is take on them. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're just going to go to Not going to do too much on here at the moment, because obviously we're making our way through to the station, and I'm going to go on board the train when I'll update you. Uh, I've already got my tickets and everything. So that's all sorted. Um, all, it, all it is at the moment is just a case of getting to the enough, getting on the train, getting warm because it is rainy and windy out there. Um, I didn't get a lot of sleep as you can tell by the blinking. That's because there was a massive windstorm in Plymouth last night and it kept me awake. Was, and my window isn't that great at the moment, so you can always hear the wind come through, so you can probably hear it now as well. <laughs> There's proof the wind wants to say like. Um, I'll digress here. Um, if you do enjoy the video, please do like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell for updates. So let's begin. Uh, off to the station platform we go. <laughs> Plymouth now we're in the concourse and there's our departure 0549 is ours Newton Abbott, Exxon and Davies, Taunton, Reading, Paddington very fast service so let's make our way through as you can tell at this time of the morning um, Plymouth's bar is uh, completely unstaffed so I think this is sort of morning and evening time like early morning it's not staffed and then like after like 9 p.m. ish, 9.30 ish, they're unstaffed again. So that's just what I found from experience. So just looking out from the train because I've just had a completely dumb moment and forgot what platform it was on. Uh, no use saying it in the comments because I worked it out by the time. Well, it's not live, so no point. I do think we're probably on the far end though, seven and eight, or five and six. Don't think we're on four. Oh, 0549, it's platform six. Just in time for the doors to open. So I should get you on one board. Two one oh two there on the O five forty two Penzance starting here at Plymouth and there is fifty seven six oh five Totnes Castle and this is the Night Riviera sleeper 
hopefully one day I'll get to every platform so we're on board this and head over to do a day out so yeah we'll definitely be including this at some stage in the future hopefully this year so here it is anyway but we're going to get on board our train now all right so on board we go now heading over to our train
in the vestibule here on the, the unit actually is 802110 if anyone was curious what to say this morning uh, we've got a TFL rail 345 which is just going past us over there there's loads of them running uh, didn't get the number of course because it's placed in a way that's not very, well, not very well angled from the door we're just outside of Paddington we are still running about 12 minutes late so not great there we go <laughs> something else I didn't notice as well was uh, in the bike rack they've actually got the reservation system thing up there as well which I actually had no idea about which is pretty cool um, anyway so the plan is when we get off at Paddington um, it will be to go over to the underground section and go and buy a ticket actually no I don't even have to do that no I can just scan it on my phone can't I yeah I'll just do that then tap in and tap out um, if you guys have contactless like cards and stuff if you didn't know when you go to the barriers and you need to travel between two underground stations for the purposes of a journey then just tap in at one station with your phone and then tap back out when you get we are now into the, the turning station excuse me it's fun fact for you anyway I'll update you when we're near Just now arriving <coughs> into London Paddington. Three eight seven is there heading out. Three eight seven one four seven. And front is three eight seven one six nine. There might be another one with it. Unless it's just those two. But for now, let's get the door open. No, it is one five seven. Three eight seven one five seven. since I've returned to this station on a journey of any kind so welcome to London Paddington first time I'm here on the GoPro as well also the part over here in case you want to see is a Heathrow Express 387 which are now running as well They're running the service, the so 332s are gone now, if you didn't know. Um, they got taken out of service and they are sadly to be scrapped. But with the amount of corrosion they put up on them, it's no surprise that they're probably getting scrapped because they have been around for a long time. They may look new, but they really are not. Let's just put it like that. Um, so, let's update you when we're in the underground section. Right, so, we're just at platform 7 and 8 here at London Paddington. And what we're going to do now is we're going to head up this hill over here. This is a step three hill. It's going to take me over to the underground section of Paddington, which is where I need to go next. Now, for those who don't know Paddington, and they're watching and they're maybe nervous travellers, travelling around the tube I know can be a very, very nerve-wracking thing. Um, believe me, I know. And a lot of my family know too. But both of these lines, Hamath, Simpson City and Circle, they are absolutely fine. Um, Hamath, City and Circle. Um, they are absolutely fine to travel on. There's no issues. And um, yeah. So, say if I'm going to like King's Cross and Pancras or something, you can use both lines. Um, there is another line that runs here, which is the Bakerloo line, but it's not on this side of the station. Another time we'll go over and look at the Bakerloo side. But, here we are. Now, an A2 
changes in something around there, honestly. It was nice to be in London again. Albeit not for long, but still. Uh, so, this is what we want. So we're here, and we need to go here. Things cross St Pancras, so we're looking at one, two, three, oh, five stops. Should only be about ten minutes. So yeah, let's go and uh, get on board. I felt convenient that a circle line train has just turned up where I need to go, so I'm going to very quickly board. This is a circle line train via Baker Street and King's Cross St Pancras. Right, we have now arrived into King's Cross St Pancras. Sorry I didn't get the arrival off of the underground and it got a bit busy and I also sort of daydreamed and forgot we were approaching. So, mix of two things really. But we are here and we are making our way up to the top concourse. Um, and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do because it's called King's Cross St Pancras for a reason when we get out of the station I will explain a little more to you Hang on a minute. so um, we are now so we're just now at the barriers at, um, inside St Pancras station at the moment now Kings Cross St Pancras is basically a tube station that serves both London Kings Cross and London St Pancras together because they are literally across the road from each other so I've got the wrong way um, so this is St Pancras, the big entrance, looking lovely, but we're not going that way. We're going to go to the right here and head outside. Those people who travel a lot, you'll know this, but for those who don't, this is sort of the cool thing about having a tube station that serves two of probably the UK's biggest and busiest London terminals. Now inside there is the Grand Terrace. Now that is basically a restaurant, which a very fancy restaurant I will add, um, up by the Eurostar platforms. I hope because now the news about Eurostar being bought out by um, another foreign company for in Europe. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but um, they'll be back in service at some point. Well, they already are, but they'll be like recovered and they'll be able to. Um, sustain themselves again but let's hope that can continue there is King's Cross big building with the clock over there and we're a bit closer in fact actually we'll just walk around um, there is King's Cross that's where we're going we're exiting there which is London's the entrance to King's Cross and Pancras tube station which is actually there is actually two entrances you can actually get in to King's Cross St Pancras from King's Cross or from St Pancras because there's a big bulky building over there which right next to King's Cross which enters you in from King's Cross oh there's a green man didn't realise um, anyway I'm not good. so you can see there's a lot of work going on to King's Cross at the moment um, they are removed they have removed one of the platforms and the signal box has now been removed as well so now that's all being controlled by York, I believe. So King's Cross now is changing. They had to close it for a while and loads of things were terminating like Peterborough and Finsbury Park. So um, yeah, but here we are anyway, into the lovely London King's Cross. Uh, how long have we got a video left? Oh, we've got 20 minutes in, that's not bad. Um, right. Give me two seconds, I was putting my mask on. Um, so, we walk up here, we'll go into King's Cross, and then go from there. What I need to do in here is buy my North East Rover, and I'll show you about that on the train. Uh, and a couple other interesting things as well, which I'll point out a little bit later on in the video. But in we go, and here we are. Dragged out a little bit, so I'm going to show you the walk, but here we are. And typically people wait around here for the train because it's a bit like Paddington. Platforms aren't allocated except it's a bit more organised here. So yes. Stand here like a passenger travelling on the East Coast Main Line. There's mine up there, 1019 to Hull. And if you can see that very well, 
the boarding will be happening in about 25 minutes, so fine. Okay, so we're just on the platform now here at London King's Cross and we've got 802.305, which is our whole train service, which we're going to be taking out to uh, our left, of course. Very self explanatory, so let's get on board. You can see a customer for so hot chocolate and a bacon bag, which you can have in a bit. Um, the yellow labels, which are sort of these ones are for groups of people, so couples, families, things like that, people travelling together, they go in the yellow label seats. So, whole trains are really, really organised on this one, so they're very, very good. Uh, right, so I'm going to go actually.
next to the uh, side end, she's now a rail officer. Yeah, 
made it to Hull Station, Hull Paragon Interchange as the full name is. Here is 802.305, that's just took, brought me in. Departing over here as well is a 155 I think. Yeah 155 347. That's heading over to uh, Bridlington I believe. So, <laughs> excuse me. So 185's over there, another 155. Which is 155346. <laughs> Excuse me. Just getting over a very, very annoying. Well, it wasn't a massive sort of throw, but I'm just getting over it. Um, it's gone now pretty much. It's just a little hiccups here and there. 185128's here as well, with something else, but they've detached. And yeah. So the plan is now we're gonna get to York. As hotel check-in isn't yet. Uh, it'll be about three o'clock but I'm gonna kill some time. I still got a bit few bits to do today, it is only lunchtime, so why not make the most of the day? So I'm headed over to York and we're gonna go on from there. Just a very quick look, this is the entrance to Hull over here. We're gonna walk into it in just a second. Um, I'm actually staying here for two nights, so I'm taking a stroll just around the main area outside the station. The station is pretty much in the city centre, so there's no difficulty in getting anywhere especially if you're filming or doing any spotting or trains or whatever it's easier to do this uh, so there's a holiday inn up there but that's not my um, hotel mine's a travel lodge it's a little bit further down the road but we'll be going in there later so now I'm not going to go too far along but yeah we'll head inside the station and hang about there for a bit Right, so here's a better look at the entrance as we go in. And so we've got our sign up there. And as we head in, here we are. And the station is called Hull Paragon Interchange because it's technically not just a train station or railway station, sorry, but I believe it's also some sort of bus place as well. So, So it's got information for pretty much everything. It's a interchange for motor transport. It's not necessarily for the trains. Although the trains are up here, we'll head over. Down here you've just got the main areas. So this is called a whole power of the interchange because over here, inside of the station, you've got a load of numbers. So one all the way up to like 29. Yeah, goodness, there's loads. Um, so here you've got all your bus departures. Uh, some, probably some of the bus geeks that follow this channel will love this, even though this isn't what I'm aiming for. There's loads of bays here that just, um, yeah, it's massive. Bigger than 
do they need this many? It's a big question, but it clearly shows that they do. So, yeah. Um, so, as we head back around here, and if we turn to the right, go up here, and you've got the platforms, the trains, which we're wearing in for. Not a lot of places you go to within uh, the UK, like railway station wise. Also, integrate with a bus depot or a bus interchange. So, Hull is one of those. I think Meadow was another one. So, yes. You have got other stations that will mix in with trams, but not buses. So, it's a good one. You know. If we go around here, this is the last bit. Here is the departures. So, for instance, our train is the 1346 to York, which is uh, platform 3, I believe it's 158873 if one's real time train, real time trains. So, it could be right, it could be wrong, but what I do know is you've got a lot of trains here 185141, 153344. 153346, which is just called in, and 158815. Right there, so yes. Right, so in comes here 17476, which is the 1325 Northern service from Scarborough to Sheffield, and here is 17473, which is from the 1321 from Sheffield to Scarborough. So there's that one that's going to be heading to Sheffield in a short while, as this one's heading to Scarborough. Right, so there goes 17473 and that's heading out to Scarborough. It's only slow speed limits out here because it basically the trains all trains have to reverse here if they even if they're a through service, which this that one is and so is this one. So quite a lot of them are through services actually. Transpennine Express typically are not. Whole trains are not. So yes. There we go now. It's a 1325 to Sheffield. 17476 which reversed out So off that one goes. Right, we're now going to wait for. Well, I'm now going to wait for my train. She's going to take me over to York. I'll update you when it arrives. Arrive... Arriving over here is 158853, which I thought was going to be our train to take us to York. But that's now looking like actually it's 815 is doing it. So. One would have been yeah it is, 100%. Right, okay. Right, so we're now going to head for 158815, let's hope.
I'll update you whenever the lights are on going around this station. Right, so my next train is actually the 1600 to Scarborough, and unfortunately I've got a 185. Um, so there's 15277 and 170 that have both turned up from Leeds to Harrogate. Have I got that? The platform is packed. Oh goodness me. Okay. This will be fun. I'll update you in a minute when we're nearer. Right, so here's my train, it's 185.150 and 185.147, so at least it's a 6. I'm still not convinced all of a sudden because I think it's going to be packed. 185.150 is going mental. Shame it's not a 68, but plenty of chances to do them. And I want to make sure that it is on the list, don't worry. It's quieter at this end, ish. Scarborough. This train is six coaches long, there's eight for the space down in the front three coaches. See, this, this was just the clever thing to do. I'm on board the train now. 185147 is my one. If you notice anything and suspicious, please speak to a member of staff or text the British yeah, Transport Police on 6101. If you see it, I'll tell you, say it, go for the first car as you see. They don't do the big brain move and come up to the front. So, yes, we are on board 185 and we're making our way to Scarborough. Alright, so we're now departing York. So it's absolutely pouring down the rain here, but we are here at Scarborough Station. Very different, because there's inside and outside platforms, it's a bit like a reverse Penzance almost. There's more of it's on the inside than it is on the outside, but there we go. No, more of it's on the outside than it is on the inside, but anyway, or underneath the catenary at least. 680290, that's doing the 1834 to York, uh, from what I can see. These ones are doing the next service to York and then presumably there's another service which will be doing my train which is going to take me back to Hull, but we'll see. 
Uh, so, very quickly, um, the station serves Transpennine Express hourly between York and Scarborough at the moment, although hopefully soon Liverpool Lime Street, like it used to do. And uh, also says Northern to Sheffield from here, going to uh, Scarborough. So, uh, sorry, from Scarborough and to Scarborough from Sheffield, basically. From Scarborough to Sheffield, Sheffield to Scarborough, you know what I mean. And they usually use 170s as well. I presume is already here, but I can't find it. It must be on the other side. Um, we're going to go outside and have a very quick look at the entrance. But really, Scarborough in a nutshell is this. It's got way too many platforms for what it needs to be. Is it a, this? It's not ready to go into a race, is it? That carriage does not sound good. Or at least it's having problems trying to rev up properly. I mean, that's a typical 185 thing to do, but that sounds weirder than most of my pad. F1 train edition. So we're not spending much time here, but this is the entrance into Scarborough. Uh, we're going to take a walk into the station. Uh, so out here you've got the departure screens. Car park's quite big. Uh, ticket office is somewhere. I think it's inside the catenary over there. Basically, you go in through this little gate over here. It's not the most obvious of entrances. Our train is a 1700 to Sheffield. I better get over there. Platform 4. So, come with me and we'll walk around to find it. And, uh, oh. Sound like I'm hosting a TV show. Come with me and we'll walk around to find it. It's a train and it's you'll probably see it through the window this one at five anyway. That's uh whilst we are under the continuum, I can take my head down because uh, the weather is absolutely appalling. No matter, GoPro's are waterproof. Hooray! It is leaking in here as well, pretty bad. <laughs> so there's a concourse as well, we can pass it. has got quite a few bits and bobs to it. It's very busy at the moment, so I'm not really going to focus too much on that. What I will do is walk around. Oh! I think we've got a 155 to Sheffield. No, hang on. Yes, we do. Goodness. Yeah, this will swap over our Harlot Musty. My first ever time on a 155 though, although it is basically just converted 153s. But still. Seven five three, I think. No, it's a nine. 
Yeah, he's seven point. It's a three kill. Update. We just made it to the hotel, which is just up the top there. I'm gonna update you when we get in and sort everything out because I obviously don't want to do any others. No. Right, so we checked in, we're all sorted uh, in that sense. So I'm just now finding my room. I think it's this one here. 409. By the time everyone watches this, I'd have checked out. But here we are. Uh, so the views, okay, well, it's not that great, but there we go. It's a hotel room. I'm only here for a couple of nights. The main thing is the traveling. So uh, yeah, what I'm gonna say now, guys, is thank you very much for watching uh, the first part of the Yorkshire trip, getting there, um, which we now done. The next episode will be the whole day out I do in Yorkshire, where I go visit and do like an every platform-esque style episode like normal and then the third part will be going home so yes i shall see you all very soon please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed today today's video and do hit the notifications bell of course and i shall see you guys next time speak to you soon goodbye for now